Kale, tears streaming down his face, stands amidst the ruins of his fallen city. He carefully cradles a small, glowing shard, the last remnant of his civilization's energy source, the Heartstone, and kneels before an ancient, wise elder in a dimly lit makeshift shelter. He stands at the edge of his ruined city. Later, Kyle traverses a dense ancient forest, sunlight filtering through the canopy. On his journey, he encounters a majestic ancient creature, a colossal. The glowing stag gently lowers its head, touching Kale's shard with its antlers. Kale stands on a high cliff, overlooking a vibrant, thriving city nestled in a lush valley. He came to a city where a young woman with braided hair offers him a bowl of fruit. Kael later met with the elders of the village and talked with them on how to help his city. Many of you may have already heard of Google Nano Banana. Yes, the tool that's currently breaking the internet. For a long time, we've relied on ChatGPT to generate prompts and images for our stories, movies, and creative projects. And it's been amazing. But now, with Google Nano Banana, everything just got easier. You can create it all in one space, from script writing to image generation to full animations. In today's tutorial, I'll walk you step by step through how to create a short AI animation video, just like the one we watched earlier. We'll start with script generation, move into image creation, bring those images to life with animation, and finally polish everything up using CapCut. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'll always be the first to know when I drop new tutorials like this. And here's the exciting part, our brand new AI automation course, AI animation of all kinds, is ready and will be going live very soon. If you love Bible stories, AI movies or storytelling of any kind, this course is going to be the best investment you'll ever make and my team has made sure it's affordable for everyone. Stay tuned because we'll notify you the moment it's available. You can also join our Telegram group using the link in the description to get notified when the course is live. So, without wasting any more time, let's dive straight into today's tutorial. So, to get started, all you need to do is type Google Gemini into your browser. Once you search for it, click on the very first option that appears. That's going to bring you directly to the main page. Now, you may either see a pop-up that says, New, try image editing with our best image model, Nano Banana. Or if you don't see that, simply come over here and click on the 2.5 flash model. Once you've done that, click on try it out, and it will automatically open up the dashboard for you. On this dashboard, you'll notice an option to add a reference image. If you look closely at the panel here, you can also choose from several options depending on what you want to generate. Since today's tutorial is focused on using a reference image, I already prepared one in advance. So, let's head into my Google Gemini workspace, where I uploaded a reference image to demonstrate how to use it. Here's exactly what I did. I uploaded the reference image, and then I typed in a prompt that said, Using this image, can you generate 20 different images and prompts for a complete story? With this character being the main cast? As you can see, Google Nano Banana went ahead and did exactly that. It generated the very first prompt, and alongside it, the first image. Then it created the second prompt and second image, the third prompt and third image, and so on. If we scroll further down, we'll notice that it continued generating until it eventually stopped around prompt 15. But here's the good thing, whenever it stops midway, you can simply tell Google Nano Banana to continue from where it left off, and it will finish generating the rest of the prompts and images. That way, you still get the full set of 20 prompts and 20 images without losing continuity. After generating those, I also asked Google Nano Banana to create a story write-up based on the prompts and images it had already produced, and yes, it generated a complete story for me. This means you can literally use Nano Banana not only to generate prompts and images, but also to get a full script or story around them. In my case, I didn't end up using the story itself. I preferred working with the prompts to write my own version. But it's amazing to see that the tool can do all of this in one place. Now, let's talk about thumbnails. Many of us may have struggled in the past to generate proper thumbnails. With Google Nano Banana, this is no longer a problem. Just like I did here, all you need to do is ask it to generate a thumbnail based on your story. For example, it gave me one titled, The Sundered Shard, A Kale Story. Later, I asked it to regenerate another thumbnail, and it used a different image altogether. But then, I specifically told it to generate a thumbnail using the main image from the beginning of the story, and that's when it gave me this final, amazing thumbnail, which I actually used for my video. 
Although I didn't show the write-up process for the thumbnail in detail here, I did create one for myself. This will be covered step by step inside the course. So, if you're interested, make sure you join our Telegram group to get notified when the course is officially out. And let me tell you, if you really want to start making money on YouTube through AI animation, whether it's Bible stories, AI movies, or any kind of storytelling, you absolutely need this course. It has everything you need to know, and my team and I have made sure it's very affordable for everyone. Now after generating my prompts, images, and thumbnail, the next step was to convert the static images into animations. You can use any AI image to video tool of your choice, but for this tutorial, I used Minimax AI. Right now, Minimax AI is offering a 7-day unlimited free trial, so you can take advantage of that and create as many animations as you want without paying. Here's how it works. Simply upload the image you want to animate, then input the end frame, select one of their newest models, and click Generate. For example, I uploaded this image here, then either typed in a short description or left it blank, clicked Create, and within seconds, Minimax AI generated my video. The amazing part is that you can even paste the exact prompts you used in Google Nano Banana directly into Minimax AI to guide your animation. Another thing I love is that you can generate up to 5 videos at the same time with Minimax AI. They also have both a free plan and a pro plan, so you can upgrade if you want access to higher quality results. In my course, I explain this in detail, especially the part about which models work best for specific image styles, because choosing the right model can really make a difference in the quality of your animation. Now, let's take a closer look at the final video. Remember, the images used in this animation were originally generated with Google Nano Banana. The visuals are unique and beautiful, but I noticed something important. In one of the clips, the original dark skin character suddenly changed into a foreign-looking character, possibly American or Chinese. This happened because the AI struggled with the clarity of the original image, it wasn't sharp enough, and part of the character was covered in shadows. That's why the AI made a guess and replaced the character with someone else. But don't worry, this is very easy to fix. If you ever run into this issue, all you need to do is ask the AI to generate a close-up version of your character, making sure the face and details are clear. That way, the model won't confuse the identity when animating. So, as you can see, creating a complete AI story using Google Nano Banana is absolutely possible. In the past, we had to rely on multiple AI tools. ChatGPT for prompts, another for images, another for animation, and yet another for editing. But now, Google Nano Banana combines most of these processes into one streamlined platform. So let's take a look at how I edited this in CapCut. I did little or no work here. I only placed the videos in place, and then added the voiceover beneath the video. I added the fade out animation in the animation section. To do this, just click the animation option, and you will find the fade in effect for in, and fade out effect for out. To upscale your video, just click the image or video and click the enhance option. I hope this breakdown was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.